Have you ever wondered how your finances compare to the typical person, or how much others have saved for retirement? How does your annual income compare to that of others? What about your financial situation? Looking at these numbers will provide you with more insight into your situation and can be utilized to determine whether you're financially more successful than the average person. Pay attention because some of these are quite surprising. Welcome to Cashflow Canvas, where we teach people about money, personal finance, and investing. If you're interested in improving your financial future, subscribe to the channel and hit the like button if this video is helpful. You must work for a living. Do you believe you earn more or less than the average worker? According to the U.S. Department of Labor Statistics, the median income for a full-time worker was $1,401 per week or approximately $52,000 per year based on a 40-hour work week, which equates to about $26 per hour. Of course, this is before tax. According to the most recent Federal Reserve data, the median amount saved for retirement among all adults was $65,000, not household income, which is the total income of all members living in a home including spouses and their dependents. This figure is based on all ages. If someone were to retire with this amount using a 4% safe withdrawal rate, it would only produce $2,600 per year in income for those aged 25 and under who had a median retirement account. $1,786, the median balance for those aged 25 to 34, was just over $14,000, and it climbed to nearly $80,000 for those aged 65 and older. These low numbers are concerning, given that the average household will likely require more than $500, $1,000 or more in addition to other income streams, in order to retire comfortably. Many Americans rely on Social Security income as their sole source of retirement income, and for most who have nothing else saved for retirement, it will need to be supplemented with income from a job. Keep in mind that $1,550,000 per month is only the average payment amount. And those who never earned much money in an average year will likely receive even less. For others, they plan for retirement without considering the fact that they'll even receive Social Security income at all instead viewing it as a bonus. Furthermore, the benefit amount will vary depending on what are you plan on retiring. Filing for it, most people can get an estimate of their benefits based on their past earnings on the Social Security Administration website. The average household spends about $5,577 per month. According to the U.S. Department of Labor Statistics, over the course of a year, that's about $60,000 in total. Annual spending means you'd have to take home that much money as a household each year just to get by. That figure covers everything from major costs like housing, transport, and food, which commonly eat up a large percentage of the average budget. To be more specific, the average household spends $1,885 per year. Month on housing, accounting for 34% of total spending, $691 per month on food, and $913 per month on transportation credit scores can range from as low as 300 to as high as 850, with the average FICO score being surprisingly high at 715 according to Experian. Despite the fact that some people undervalue the importance of having a decent credit score, most people will profit immensely from having a respectable number. If you ever plan on utilizing any form of debt, You'll want to pay attention to your score. A credit score influences the mortgage rate you will obtain when purchasing a home or renting one. Influence the conditions you receive for a vehicle loan and other forms of possibly low interest debt. Thankfully, that is rather simple to maintain this score, and you can do so simply by paying your payments on time. According to past experience, payment history is the most important element influencing your credit score, followed by credit utilization ratio. What forms of credit do you have and how much fresh credit do you have? According to Wallathub, the average family has $9,260 in credit card debt, which may be the worst form of debt you can carry. One of the primary issues with carrying credit card debt is the excessively high interest rates if you're paying a 15%, 20% or more interest rate. The interest rate on credit card debt is 25%, which far exceeds what you could typically earn by investing in the stock market. Furthermore, credit cards encourage wasteful spending, which means that much of that debt is probably the result of overspending and buying things that weren't even needed like clothes and electronics. The majority of this debt is likely made up of appliances and random online purchases with no residual worth. 
The simple approach is to pay your debt in full every month. Don't buy anything you can't afford and only use a debit card. It's also a good idea to keep track of your net worth so you can plan ahead of time. Net worth is an effective approach to monitoring your financial well-being and identifying strengths and weaknesses as you grow money. Net worth is measured by adding the values of all the assets you own, such as your home, vehicles, and other items, as well as your retirement accounts, and subtracting everything you owe, such as a mortgage. The Federal Reserve discovered that the median net worth for households in the United States is approximately $122,000. For those under the age of 35 and less than $14,000, for those between the ages of 35 and 44, tens of thousands of dollars, the difference between 45 and 54 is $168,000. 55 to 64 equals 212,000, whereas 65 to 74 equals $260,000. With a respectable income and some discipline, these net worth values are easily exceeded. The amount of money saved by the average person changes from year to year. Depending on various factors, such as the economy and others, data collected from the United States Bureau of Economic Analysis shows that the average savings rate is around 6%, which means they save about 6% of their income after taxes. This money could be saved for a home purchase, home 6%, new car, college retirement, or unexpected expenses after retirement achieving all short- and medium-term savings objectives. This doesn't leave much money for retirement when you consider that the average down payment on a home is $62,000, the average kitchen makeover is around $26,000, and the average new automobile costs over $47,000. Everyone wants to be able to retire early so that they don't have to spend the majority of their time working. However, according to Ramsey Solutions, the average retirement age is 61 even though most people cannot collect their full Social Security payments until they are 67. According to the Social Security Administration, someone who reaches the age of 65 should expect to live another 19 to 21 and a half years after retiring. The 60s means you've been in the workforce for roughly four decades. For those who start investing early, this amount of time provides ample opportunity to earn compound interest. However, Will retiring at the age of 61 leave enough time for doing the things you enjoy? Mobility is important, but how long can you expect to be in good enough health to enjoy your hobbies? It's difficult to get a clear perspective on how you're doing with the money. And sometimes it feels like you're nowhere near where you should be in making little progress. These financial statistics for the average person are likely to help. To surprise you and provide some insight into your financial well-being, you may discover that you are performing better than the typical person providing you with the motivation to continue improving.